All right, so let's talk a little bit about area of operation. Well, not a little bit, quite a bit about area of operation. Now, I guess the first thing we need to just, uh, consider with area of operation is what is your area? Specifically, where are you going to use your boat? Um, what is the lifestyle expectation? And this is what we're trying to determine and what is gonna feel comfortable in being the platform for that lifestyle expectation. So area of operation is vast. Um, it's not as obvious as we first think. So let's start with rivers. Now, obviously a river seems pretty benign, pretty calm. Um, and there's a lot of things to consider with the boats in rivers. You can have a lot flatter bottom boat. Obviously you don't need that really deep you know, to displacement, to deep V stability that you might need out in the open water. Um, but the things to consider are your draft, obviously. You know, rivers have shallow areas, um, depending on the nature of the river. Uh, things like the draft being the depth of your actual hull, okay? Um, then there's tide. Uh, is the river affected tidal by tidal uh, of influence? Obviously, some influences, like say here in our rivers, you know, the average is about a metre tide. Up north, um, right up in the northern parts of Australia, the tides are massive. So you need to find a boat that if you're going to be in those areas, that just sits on its own bum if you need it to, if you're going to be in those areas. Um, so the other thing to consider with rivers is obviously the rate of flow in the river. And what are the, what are the moderate conditions? Okay, moderate conditions in a river could be you know, still stormy weather, but also the flow rate is increased. Um, flooding is sort of an extreme condition with a high rate of river flow can make rivers quite dangerous. So you can see that in, even in a river scenario, we have the extremes from fair weather or fair state of water to the extreme, which can be um, dangerous. So the other consideration of being on a river is obviously the air draft. Okay, so we have the draft below the waterline, but we have the draft above the waterline. Um, low hanging branches, those sorts of things, and also uh, bridges. Um, for an extreme example, the lowest bridge that crosses the Yarra River in Melbourne is the Spencer Street Bridge with a 2.4 metre um, high tide height. Now I've seen it go a lot less than that. And there's no way that you could have a boat unless it's a completely open boat that would be able to get up the Yarra River um, if it had a hard top all year round. So they're sort of things to consider in rivers um, and estuary waters. Also, speed restrictions. Uh, there's a lot of speed restrictions in sections of the river. So if most of the waterways you're going through have speed restrictions, maybe it's not necessary that it has a, have a boat that does five million knots um, because uh, under, under worked engines um, often do a lot of damage to themselves because they're not being used at their optimal uh, RPM rate. Anyway, that's a slight digression, but something to think about when looking at areas that have those speed restrictions on them and no wake zones.